everyone, it's Michelle Caruana from Play Cafe Academy, and I'm doing a little special video series um, with different um, parenting experts that I know, um, different people that are affected by the coronavirus in different ways, people that are going to be now working from home, people that are going to be shifting some of their service-based or brick-and-mortar based businesses online, things like that. Basically, all sorts of parents and entrepreneurs and um, you know regular people in the workforce just kind of trying to figure out these next couple weeks and months and giving you guys some practical tips that you guys can take home. And the first people that I'm going to talk to, they were honestly the first people I thought of when I heard that my children's school was going to be canceled um, or we were going to be home indefinitely. They are homeschooling experts. They are parenting experts. They're certified sleep and potty training consultants, I believe. And it's Brad and Greta Zood. And I'm going to share my interview with them. I just wrapped it up and they gave so much amazing advice for not only how to structure a homeschooling day, so how to make sure your children aren't losing their um, you know, academic sharpness or not using their mental clarity, anything like that, how to structure a homeschool day, how to avoid conflict, how to make sure you know, you're staying on top of your household chores because, you know, in addition to all of these, you know, qualifications that they have and they have online training programs to help other parents get through these types of, um, these types of struggles, but they also have seven children and they're expecting their eighth. So they have a ton of experience in this topic. So I was going to reach out to them personally, but I decided that I wanted to share their advice with you guys. So I hope it's really helpful. They also give some absolutely amazing practical advice about how you can still get work done and maintain your sanity and maintain your household and things like that, all while having your children home a lot more, regardless of you know how many children you have or their ages or anything like that. They give tips all across the board. So I am going to go ahead and share my interview with them. And if you guys have any questions or want more information about them or their resources, I'm going to link everything in the description of this video. So again, leave uh, comments and we will answer them as best as we can or you can just click the links and check out their YouTube channel or any of their online programs. I highly, highly, highly recommend them. They've already changed our lives as parents. So without further ado, here is my interview. I'm an influencer parenting.com. So uh, we're number one best-selling parenting authors. Videos have millions of views. Uh, you know, all that kind of stuff. But most importantly, we have seven children of our own. Eight come May. Eight uh, coming on <laughs> May. I didn't realize that. Congratulations. Yes, I'm big and pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I we got the camera. from the crop. <laughs> yeah. Cropped it. Perfect. So, um, you have all ours together, you know, for, you know, so we're, we had to become parenting experts, uh, to say the least, uh, by any means. And uh, we, we work with thousands of families all over the world and talk about anything from getting baby to sleep to toddler behavior to older children behavior. And we're humongous homeschool advocates. We're like the biggest homeschool advocates in the world. We love it. And uh, so if, it, if it's about children, we, we enjoy doing it and, and uh, love talking about it. So thank you so much for having us. Thank you. Yeah, and again, that's exactly why I thought of you guys first. Once I saw that schools were closing, I was going to reach out to you guys personally, but then I was like, you know what, I figure I should share this with my audience because I've been getting so many questions about this. Oh, it's so crazy. So first, before we get into some questions, can you walk me through like a typical homeschooling day that you guys have? <laughs> yeah, um, we have a, we're pretty set in our schedule. Um, I think that uh, routine is really, really important for kids. So, um, you know, we have four days of the week that are pretty much the same. And um, we get up and we do our chores and uh, we have breakfast and then clean up and then we all sit down together and uh, have, have some group instruction time. And then we all split off and, and do our own things while I work with all the kids individually and rotate them through. Um, so it's, it is a little bit of a challenge um, because we have children ranging from 11 years old to, well, one and a half, and we're gonna have a baby soon. Uh, it does take a lot of, it does take a lot of structure and a lot of planning. Um, so the day can get away from you very quickly. <laughs> well, if you don't if have a plan, it's just gone. It's just gone. And it's just chaos too. So, so the planning and the structure has been very, very important for our family. And, uh, and 
it'd be chaos without it. So, and then, you know, we have lunch together, a late lunch, and then the kids kind of generally have more freedom in the afternoon to be creative and um, explore what they want to explore uh, outside of our, our typical, you know, math and reading and typing and, you know, all those things that they have to get done. Um, and then we have chores and dinner and um, family time. So that's about what a day looks like in our house. Yeah, you know, whether, whether, you're, whether they're doing individual schoolwork or whether they're playing on the computer or whatever it is, it's scheduled, right? And whether it's life or business or marriage or anything else, it's just like, even if you schedule your playtime or your Netflix time or oh whatever God. time, schedule it. And uh, that's because everyone's like, how do you do it? You run these businesses and you homeschool and you're pregnant all the time. And what, what it, it's just like, <laughs> we schedule and we stick to the schedule and that's how we right. survive. Right. Yeah. And, and one, one thing I wanted to point out is, you know, people are like, I'm not schedule oriented and I can't do that. And, and, you know, the schedule and the routine really is there to serve you. It's not for you to be a slave to the schedule. And, and I, so I think the schedule thing scares a lot of people because they're like, what if I don't, what if I can't do it? What if I don't measure up? Well, you know, you really start simply with the whole schedule thing and, and let it work for you. And if it's not working, you change it. So. Right. So I'm just curious because I have two, you know, little kids. We're thankfully out of nap time, but how do you guys cope with like the younger children and nap times and things like that? Oh, that's my favorite time. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's easy. the best time of day. The little ones go down for a nap and, and the big ones, you know, they, they do have some scheduled things within that nap time, you know, some quiet reading time and then um, outside play time and, and then some free time to, you know, create, do creative things or art or, um, you know, origami or learn something that they want to learn. Um, so they do have scheduled time within that nap time. So, but it's generally a quiet time in our house so that the littles can yeah. sleep. Yeah. You know, they're the, the, the biggest encouragement to moms with toddlers. And then as they move up, keep the hours of one thirty to 4 PM in your home quiet time right it's it's whether even if you have a seven-year-old that's independent play time or whatever time it is because moms need time as well and it's that's just a great set aside time to get things done and uh teach lots right. of different skills right. so even for our 11 year old or our older kids okay it's nap time and they know that that means they don't have to go to bed but it's the nap time activities right yep it's independent time and and that's the time for me where i can either rest if I need rest or I can work if I need to work um, and not have to not have to worry about um, littles running around and um, scheduling their time stuff. Like we schedule this interview during our nap time yeah. and that's what everyone's doing right now. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, I was wondering how you guys figured that one out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the most, I mean, I have only two children and they happen to be 20 months apart. So they were napping at the same time. And I found it super difficult to get them both down for nap at the same time. How many kids do you have that currently nap? And how do you do it and not take like three hours to get them all down? You know, it's really easy. Once you, once you train them, it's, it's super easy. You know, the baby just goes down. So he's 18 months. He's not really a baby anymore. Right. But, um, I still have my three and a half year old baby. <laughs> um, so he goes down really easily. We might read a book with a, um, we've got two napping currently. Um, and so we might read a book or two together, the three of us, and then you pop the baby in his crib and, and then I put the other one down and it's really a very quick and short process because they know what to expect every day and they know what time we go to nap and, um, and they know, you know, the three-year-old, he knows to stay in bed. So I don't have to worry about him you know, disobeying or, you know, getting out of bed and playing with things he shouldn't be playing with. So he knows the rules. Yeah. I think, I think the reason, one of the core reasons and that our family logistically works is because we've done so much training in a time of non-conflict. Like it's, it, it, this seems so silly to say, but like, so, so we drive a, we drive a Ford uh, transit 12 passenger van, right? We got the big old van, you know, and, and like we literally, like in the wintertime, when you're trying to get seven kids in the car with two matching shoes, two matching socks, <laughs> hats, <laughs> matching gloves, like this, it's a thing in our life, right? So what do we do? We literally have get in the car drills. So in a time of non-conflict, which is 
the, the biggest takeaway of anything we teach our thousands of clients in a time of non-conflict, whether it's in your marriage or with your children, when you're not in the heat of a moment, take time to plan and train. And so we literally, 10 a.m., hey, we're doing car drills, so we're gonna completely get dressed, get in the car, get buckled, everyone has assigned seats, and then we get back out, we take off our coat, we take off our shoes, yeah. and rinse and repeat. And we train down to like, okay, you get, you have to get in the car first, and you get in the car last. You get out of the car first, you get out of the car last. So right. it's, it's down to that, so there's no like pushing or shoving or fighting. So, uh, so, so how one of the biggest reasons why nap time happens so easily is because we've practiced nap time, and they understand what it looks like to go down and we don't have all these nap time shenanigans and I want to drink and I this and read me a story and a song. There's just none of that. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do the older kids help the younger kids get ready and things like that? Like their shoes on, coats on? Yeah. Yeah. That is a really important part of our family is that, um, you know, the older ones there, they can change diapers and, uh, you know, they can do things to help with the little ones. Uh, if I'm the only one doing all those things and getting everybody buckled and of course, it, I mean, I would be all consumed with just managing, you know, the <laughs> logistics of life. Um, so everybody pitches in a little bit and, and <laughs> the worry that a lot of people have with big families is that, oh, your older kids don't have the childhood, you know, they have so much responsibility. Um, our kids have lots of, lots of fun and independence and, and you know, independent activities and, and, uh, but they also are a part of our family and that means we all help out. So it is really, really helpful when they get coats on for the little ones and get them buckled in. And stuff. Well, and, and the, the thing to keep in mind, especially for you moms out there with little girls, like, you know, our four-year-old little girl, Liesl, like she has a real baby to play with. Like, it's like, the best thing in the world, right? I mean, our kids <laughs> love our younger kids, they and it's do. just like the coolest thing in the world. And they, if they, if we have one problem in our family with too many kids, it's like they fight over helping or playing with the little kids, you know, if anything else. They so do. they do. Yeah. So um, what a lot of parents are facing right now is the older siblings are going to be home with the younger siblings a lot more than usual. So you, do you guys ever have any conflict between the siblings? Do you have any advice for parents who's um, you know, children are all of a sudden going to be going from going, being apart for seven hours a day to together, like full time. And not only together full time during the day, but, you know, it's going to be difficult for these next few months to even go out. So do you have any advice for like handling conflict or tantrums or anything like that? Well, I think. I know that's a loaded question. No, yeah. this is, this is it's great. great. I, I think. I'm trying to figure out where to start. There's yeah, so much to go yeah. over. I think that we want our whole pro. We want to give our whole, you know, 50 hour program in, in 30 minutes here. Um, I think the place to start really is with creating a routine and structure for your day. Yep. Because if there's, if there's no expectation laid out for your kids, the younger ones and the older ones of, okay, this is what we need to accomplish now for you older ones. Okay. This is what the little ones are going to be doing at this time. Um, everybody's going to be running around and, fighting and not knowing what they're doing. And it just is chaos. It's just chaos when you don't have a plan. And so when you can structure your day, <clears throat> you can structure time for your older ones to have independent learning. You can structure your, your older ones to have um, time one-on-one -on -one with you while your little ones have independent playtime in a blanket, uh, on a blanket time or um, in a playpen or, or in the high chair or something like that, where they're not you know, interrupting and always getting in the way to frustrate the big ones, you know, and or not getting in the big ones things or, you know, things like that. So I think the structure is the number one place to start. And that will prevent a lot of those arguments and things from happening, number one. But when they do, I don't know, do you want to take that? Yeah, I mean, so <laughs> we have a lot of family meetings. We have, we, we sit down and we discuss things as a family. And if it were us, I'd sit the kids down and be like, all right, kids, listen, obviously we have this Corona virus. Uh, here's what this is going to look like. Things are going to be different and we're going to have to do some different things for the next couple of weeks. And, you know, um, older, older child, I understand that your desire is to play Fortnite for eight hours a day. You know, <laughs> that's not going to happen, but I'm going to make sure that you get two hours of video game time in, but it's going to be when mom needs it and I'm going to be asking for your help and I need you to do that. And it's really going to expose 
how well you've trained your children or, or what those culture things are. So, uh, you know, be prepared to slow down and work through those issues mm -hmm. and train. You know, if, if there's any, like the biggest single advice I could give parents in this time, in my opinion, is that spend this time training your children, whether it's manners or behavioral things or skill sets, mm -hmm. train your children. So we spend so much time training our children on how to be nice to each other, how to speak to each other. What we, we don't go into our brothers and sisters rooms in the morning or at night. And, and just, just those simple things that it's not common sense. And a lot of those things will be exposed, I think, during these times. And um, we definitely have homeschool days where it's like, okay, we need to just take a time out. We're not focused on math or anything. And we're literally just going to do character training today. And we're literally going to be practicing saying, may I have this, please? Thank you. And that may all be all we do for an afternoon. Right, right. And it doesn't mean that we stop our normal activities. Like, I will... I will go through the motions of doing school with the expectation of I'm not going to get through a math lesson. I'm not going to get through history. And cause I'm going to have to, I know that I'm going to have to deal with the behavior and the attitude. And, uh, and that can be so, uh, so hard for moms. I think when you were like, okay, I have my, I have my to-do list and I have to get through these, these things and I got to check them off my list. But the more important thing is to deal with, the behavior and the character and the attitude because if you don't that is going to be a continual problem from day one on and you're never going to really accomplish anything but if you if you work on that if you like Brad said you know take a time out and really work through it instead of pushing it off to the side um, it's amazing how much more productive your family will be um, mm -hmm. when you get on the other side of those issues and, and it really and it starts with you know, what are your family's goals, right? So it starts with Greta and I sitting down and talking and going, okay, what, what's the point of doing this? What are we really hoping, hoping to accomplish? And, you know, is it on to Harvard than the White House? Or, you know, are we willing to like be okay and be like, hey, if we have a character training day or we have to stop or whatever. Um, and, and in these early ages, training the character and the culture of our, of our home is more important than um, scholastics, because we know they'll come. Our, our kids, you know, like most kids are very smart, very brilliant, very curious, you know, love to read all those sorts of things. And um, it's the character uh, that we're focusing on, because that that's, that's how you build equity. And so like for us, as our children get older, the more the more equity that we can stop and build, we know that the character training will pay off in the long run. And then they'll be more able to have independent study time and be that more independent. But if we skip that character training along the way, it's gonna be harder for them to kind of uh, graduate, you know, progress in that area. And then we'll get super bottlenecked as, as we go yeah, on. And just less pleasant for our family in general. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, just the fact that you guys, you know, found time to do this interview, you know, quietly in the middle of an afternoon is just testament to that. So I am very impressed. But <laughs> so a lot of us are kind of, you know, we rely on school for that structure and things like that. So for those of us who are kind of just getting started with this scheduling um, and things like that, um, the first thing I want to ask, I'm going to um, ask you some tips for parents that are just kind of thrown into this where maybe we haven't been. Um, practicing as stringently as we should have. But I have to ask, in terms of a schedule, do you guys use any like visual tools or anything like that so the children know what the schedule is? Or how do you kind of implement and let the kids know what the schedule is? Yeah, I, I think that's a, that's a good question. And it depends on the age. Uh, for little ones from two to five, I think something visual can be really helpful. But they are such fast learners too that you don't need those tools necessarily um, for very long before they're like, oh, that's next, oh, that's next. Um, they're such quick learners at that age. So um, if you don't have time to put something visual together like pictures or clip art or, you know, you could have little um, clock clip arts, you know, for the times or whatever, if you don't have time to put that together, which is totally understandable, um, you just tell them, you know, okay, we do this, then we do this, then we do this, then we do this. And after two days, three days, they've got it. 
Um, That's for great. my older kids. I was worried about that. <laughs> yeah, no, you don't, you don't need that at all. They're so smart. Um, and then for older kids, sometimes it's helpful. They have more duties, more chores to do, um, which I think gets skipped a lot when kids go to school. You know, they don't have time for that, and um, which is a really important uh, character mm -hmm. training to do along the way so that we can equip our children to be adults someday. You know, we're not, we're not training children. We're, we're training adults. You know, we're, we're building them up to be adults. Um, so uh, if they have more responsibilities that they need to get to, oftentimes lists or schedules and give them a watch. Um, that's a great way for them to start being more independent with their time and with their responsibilities. And, and I think, you know, on the onset, you were, we're maybe making a presupposition, you know, if we back up all the way to the beginning and let's say on average kids have the next two weeks off for the end of the month, um, define what your goals are for the next two weeks. Like, is it your goal to just recreate a school experience for the next two weeks or, you know, what, what do you want to see happen? And in my opinion, what, what we would tell if I was sitting down one-on-one -on -one with anyone, I would say, listen, this is a unique opportunity that we have. This is a rarity. And so I would love for parents to um, train skills into their children. So if you have a seven-year-old or an eight-year-old, I would love by the end of the week to see your seven-year-old be able to make a box of macaroni and cheese from start to finish, then trying to recreate school for the next two weeks. I would love for them to learn a skill around the house. I would love for them to learn. Yeah, how to do laundry or teach them to make baked oatmeal. And th think about how much time you're actually gonna save in the long run if you teach your kids how to do those things, so. Yeah, I, so that, that would be, you know, your goal can be whatever it is, but I would implore you that, that your goal is to do skill-based training things that then will save you time and things in the long run, um, you know, as you go about your life. You know, it's funny, Annika, our 11-year-old, um, you know, it used to be, used to be, you know, mothers would take their daughters to the store and they would shop prices and buy groceries and all this kind of stuff. Well, we're training Annika, our 11-year-old, to order our groceries online because we do Walmart pickup, right? right. Yeah. And so, like, that's a skill we want our 11 year old to have to be able to go in the cupboards assess where we're at come back order, make a meal plan make a meal plan order that's groceries. gotta be pretty complicated for a large family that's good <laughs> yeah. uh, everything's just multiplied you know yeah yeah and and Annika loves it right i mean no one listen no one feels cooler than children when they're given an important task to do and they feel bought in and part of the family and so you know in another in another couple weeks Greta will hardly have to order groceries because it'll be done, you know, and that's just another thing where we're taking the time to invest and those dividends just pay off forever. Yeah, that's awesome. So um, setting a goal, I think is such a good, such a good tip and something I didn't really think of, you know, cause we just got the notification that we were closed for like a month. Um, so all I can think about is, you know, oh my gosh, what am I going to do with my kids? What are we going to so having that like goal in mind, um, I think is a really great tip. So um, for those of us who, because, you know, in addition to the kids being home, a lot of us are going to be working from home as well. So parents that are usually in an office setting with their children at school or their children in daycare, we're all going to be kind of coexisting. So do you guys have any tips for parents who are going to be working from home with their children and also tasked with, you know, the schoolwork and these goals? Yeah. So one of the, like, if you have a younger child, like, you know, baby slash, you know, two-year-old kind of a thing. Um, one of the biggest skills that we teach inside of our program um, is something called blanket time, which you put out kind of a three by three, three by five, you know, five. three by five blanket and you train your child to stay on the blanket. Like the toes don't go over. We don't get off the blanket. Um, and investing in that type of a skill might take, a day or two or whatever it is. Um, so, you know, your first couple of days or whatever, you might be able to invest in that type of training, but um, that would be a great skill to train in your child whenever you have time throughout your busy day to train them to stay on a blanket, give them one or two toys, um, and that will help buy you chunks of 30 minutes, 45 minutes, you know, throughout the day that will 
actually alleviate time for you to get some things done. Yeah, yeah. So I, I guess, you know, coming from the, from the perspective of moms with littles and me teaching lots of moms with littles, I would say take the next week if you have, have those littles and don't expect to get any work done until nap time. Um, but uh, if, just take the next week to train blanket time and train playpen time, train room time if they're a little bit older, you know, and they can play in their room but on their own, um, where that's going to be a, an uninterrupted time. Uh, so I would just expect the next week train that. And then the three weeks after that, you're going to have very, very productive work periods. Of yeah, time. you'll be able to do more in that three weeks. If you spend the first week yeah. training those logistics, then, mm -hmm. you know, you will all four. Right. And for your older kids, they, they should be learning independence and, and, you know, set, set their, set the standard for them where you have an hour right now, or you have two hours and here's your independent work. So, or, you know, the little one, he's doing playpen time for 45 minutes. You've got 45 minutes to do your work. And this is a time where nobody comes out of the room. Nobody comes out of the playpen. I'm at the table working. You're at your desk working. And that's just the standard. Um, so set those expectations and expect them to be followed through. So, um, and that will give everybody some structure and routine and ability to get work done. Yeah. I have to ask, when you talk about um, these trainings and expectations and drills and things like that, do you guys give any sort of incentives or is it just kind of that that's the expectation and that's the way it is? Or do you guys do any sort of incentives or I don't want to say bribes, but things like that? How do you? Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. So uh, a, uh, a lot of the things are expectations. They're just you know, skill and daily living, right? We're, we're going to train you guys how to, how to excel in daily living. Um, you know, we do have other things that we incentivize for, um, but not, not common behavioral training things. You know, um, we have advanced skills, uh, you know, like for example, if a mom, like the macaroni thing that I took, you know, you could say, hey, here's what I want you to do. And you could do something fun out of, um, you know, learning to make macaroni or lunch uh, by in the next three days. If you can make lunch in the next three days, we'll go out to McDonald's on the fourth day or something like that. Do the drive through of course. Yeah, Uber Eats, they'll <laughs> deliver. So. Uh, um, so yeah, we, um, you know, bribing and everything's kind of a whole, a whole nother rabbit hole, but we set expectations in the type we explain to them um, the type of child that works hard is the type of child that gets to play hard. So this morning, um, if you guys have a clean room and you do all your chores, then logically, common sensely, we'll have time for um, computer later today. If not, then we'll just have to clean our rooms later today during computer time. So it's not, we're not bribing them with computer time. We're just simply stating, this is what it looks like to have availability for computer time today. Mm -hmm. As opposed to, oh, well, if you clean your room, I'll give you computer time today. You know, and it's no just- Candy bars are being given out or anything like that, huh? Yeah. No, no. <laughs> but one important tool I think that parents are hesitant to use are consequences. Um, and that was one consequence that Brad gave. Um, you know, and we talked about behavior and attitude and how to treat one another earlier a little bit. Um, you know, if if we don't know how to- treat one another, if we don't know how to be respectful to mom and dad, if we don't know how to use our time wisely, then you don't have freedoms. So that might mean that you need to spend some time alone in your room. If you can't treat people nicely, you, you don't get to be around people, you know? So there are consequences that, that we use in our house um, that really reduce the amount of parental frustration. Um, and, and I think when we don't use consequences, Mom and dad get to that point of like, I said it, I said it, I said it, I said it, and I'm just done now, you know, and then there's an explosion. Yeah. Um, and we have to, when we implement consequences immediately for every single little thing that we expect, then we don't get to that blow up point. And the kids know like, oh, well, mom and dad expect it. So I guess I'll, I'll do that. Mm -hmm. And it, it's, it's just understood. Right. So just out of curiosity, um, as you guys are talking about like meal planning and those different activities and things like that, 
how much like choice do you give your kids throughout the day? Like, is it always like, this is what's for dinner or, you know, do they get to choose their lunches? Do they choose what they wear? Like, I imagine logistically with that many children, it would be very hard. So how do you guys handle, you know, giving them independence, but also, you know, keeping yourself sane? Uh, how much, how much time do we have, Michelle? This is like, you just like hit the hot button. This is like our favorite topic uh, in the whole wide world. I didn't know. I'm really just curious because that's because I have a three and a five year old. So that's what I'm struggling with now is they want to choose everything. But if I get them too many choices, they're overwhelmed. And it's mm -hmm. I'm just curious how you guys handle that. Yeah. Um, and you can give me the synopsis. It's OK. Yeah, no, you go. You go ahead. OK, OK. You dive in. So <laughs> there's something that we call the funnel. And um, there are many parents that there, there are parenting systems out there that give kids lots of choices down here to <laughs> teach them how to make choices. And, and just like you said, you know, so many choices lead to that stress and anxiety and, you know, all that frustration for them because they're not capable of handling that much power and that much pressure. So as our, as our kids are young, we really limit the choices. You know, we're down here where we decide most everything, you know, my one and a half year old, he doesn't get to choose anything, <laughs> obviously. Um, and, uh, you know, I tell him where to play and where to be. And, and I guess there are, there are some choices in the playroom. You know, you can choose what you want to play with in the playroom. But we're going to stay in the playroom. Um, uh, as they get a little bit older, those, those choices grow. So um, as far as meals go, most of the children don't get to decide what they want to eat unless it's a, you know, hey, leftover smorgasbord night. <laughs> um, but, uh, but the girls they help me with meal planning so they get a hand in in deciding what we eat for the week for lunches and breakfast and dinners and uh and so their choices are are growing and if that fits within our our plan as a family that's great um and i'm, I'm happy to do that so it, it grows but you have to you have to number one limit the choices young and then number two know when to expand those choices and sometimes you got to bring your funnel back down again if you're seeing that your child can't handle it if your seven-year-old is having tantrums about food you know okay nope we're gonna limit that back down again <laughs> so, so well and explain what most people do well yeah well most people have the reverse funnel and they have lots of choices down here for their one two three-year-olds and then as they see that their child is not mature is not responsible and they're getting older and then we say, you know, they get to that, those teenage years, those tween years, and we just, you know, take in everything like, you can't have any freedoms, no choices, because you can't handle it. And that's where you get the teenage rebellion from. Yeah, we, we have this, parents have this false notion that it's important to train children how to choose wisely very young by then giving them all these choices. The problem with that is, is that the toddler or the child psychologically feels that they're in control. And it, it doesn't matter if you give the child the choice between two things you want to happen, you want to see happen anyways. The problem with it is the toddler thinks they're the sheriff in town. They think that they're the authority. And that's, that's where, and it's so funny, it's called love and logic because it just doesn't, like, it's, it's not even logical. Toddlers lack the moral a uh, warehouse, the wisdom, the life experience to make a good choice. If you ask a four-year-old, would you like to wear your nice clothes or your pajamas to church? What do you think they're going to pick, right? I'm 37. I want to wear my pajamas to church, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. so. But you uh, have the moral, you know, to not. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the less choices the possible. And then when they show the freedom to do that, then we do all the way down to what color cup you're having in the morning. I want the blue cup. No, we're gonna we're gonna have the green cup today. Um, and when you see that your child is having temper tantrums over something, that is your signal that they your are sign. Not, they're not mature enough to handle the choice. So if there's a temper tantrum, yep, rein it in. No more choice here. Well, I know what we're gonna be working on um, this week at least. Um, <laughs> Anyways, so one other thing that I'm that I'm very curious about, and I feel like people are going to be struggling with this over the next month, is, you know, as a larger family who you know homeschools, how do you guys um, handle like the household chores? Do you have like a schedule like with laundry and with 
um, cleaning and things like that. How do you guys stay on top of that with your, your kids home all the time? Because most parents I know do that stuff while the kids are at school or, you know, so how do you guys handle that and stay on top of it to make sure everything's, you know, running smoothly? Yeah, um, we definitely have set responsibilities and, and set chore times. Um, and uh, we separate chores so that a child can get really good at something. Uh, so, you know, my one son, he wipes down his bathroom and his, he does his mirror and he does his toilet every, every day. And he shares the bathroom with three other boys. So it gets a little messy, but, um, but guess what? He's getting really good at cleaning the bathroom. And then once his, his younger brother is old enough for that, he'll move on to something else and his younger brother will take over those chores. And there's just an expectation and a routine. Like this is what you do every single morning. <laughs> and, uh, um, our six year old up, they all have their own laundry basket and they all do their own laundry, fold their own laundry and put it away. And it's, it's, it's taking the time to teach them those skills. And so they can do it themselves. And that gives them so much confidence and, and they might not even realize it now <laughs> and that they're, and they're it's building all that everyone does that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You know, you have to do that when you're older, but so many kids get to college and they're like, I don't know how to turn on a washing machine. You know what, what's laundry soap? I, you or know? their parents still do it for them till they're married. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Look at me. I'm looking at uh, <laughs> with me out there. <laughs> oh man. But you know what, when I, I'm so excited to send my kids off into, into life as an adult, because they're going to be so equipped and, and my, my daughters are going to know how to manage a home and and do that but it really comes down to like this is what we do on on these days everyone has their checklists and and we have our certain times of the day that we do that and um and it's it's very good it is very good because I couldn't manage that all myself so and, and training those skills again I think it's just so much more important during these other two weeks I mean it's just such a unique opportunity to have parents do that and as opposed to trying to recreate a schoolroom session um, at home, I, it would. Mm -hmm. And you might, you might have to do those things. Yeah, you might. So I don't know, some schools, you know, sent work or, yeah. or whatever the deal is, but. Um, yeah, but it's funny too, though, that you can squish, as a homeschooler, we squish so much into a short period of time because it is individual attention and you're not, it's not a class of 30 or 35. And um, so that book work, really can get done in an hour or two and then you have the whole rest of the day to to train in the chores or or you know do those other kinds of things that you want to do so right that's such a good point too the kids are not used to even even the kids you know are not used to that individual attention so it's going to be different for them as well as the parents too so yes yes about that so do you guys have any like last words of advice for parents kind of going into the next month or so with all their kids home? I know you guys gave a ton of advice already, but is there anything that we left out? You know, I think, I think what this, this period in, of time in humanity is going to teach a lot of parents is how important it is to invest in your children and really pour into our children and be encouraged and be reminded that our children can do so much if we just take the time to invest in them and to show them. You know, there's there's not, look, our children, we're not special. We live in Podunk, Iowa. Like, we're, you know, we don't have PhDs, the whole deal. Like, we're just really intentional with our children and what our, our life looks like. And, you know, when, when someone listening to this says, six-year-old doing the laundry, like, we don't have boy genius or girl genius. We just took the time that says, you have a basket, here's where it goes, here's this, you do this. We've stuck with it a, you know, a few times and now it happens and kids can do so much more than we give them credit for. So just keep those things in mind. And you know, we, have, we have programs where we work with parents and it's, they're, they're really affordable and it's just like, invest in your children, invest in your family. It's the best reward life can give. Yeah. You don't have anywhere else to go anyway. So, you know, <laughs> yeah. What a um, unique opportunity. Yeah. yeah and, that, and, that's such a good point. It is, is such a unique opportunity. And I have so many friends that are teachers that are terrified of, you know, coming back after a month because, you know, they think the kids are going to be completely like reset for routine. So 
hearing these practical tips is, you know, I hope a lot of people watch this and I hope it gives teachers a little bit more sanity when the kids come back. Maybe the kids can actually, you know, like you said, be improved in their manners and improved in their um, routines and practical life skills. Yeah, and one other thing I wanted to point out is I think that parents might have a hard time with the child uh, respecting them as an authority. Um, I think that, you know, that's something that we work really hard on at home. And I am, I am the, the authority. I am the teacher for my kids. And when a, when a child goes out of the home, they get that from their teacher and they respect their teacher, but oftentimes they come home and they're not respectful. They just don't view mom and dad or mom or dad as that, as that right. person. And it takes, it takes a lot of effort to, to establish the relationship in that way. And, you know, so you might have goals of like, I want to teach my, my child laundry and I want to teach him how to da -da 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 -da. but you're really going to have to work on step one of them listening and, and seeing me as the authority. Right. So, and, and that's what, and it's funny because that's what influencer parenting is all about, right? It's, it's the, so we have my baby can sleep where we help, you know, get baby sleeping. And then we have a toddler behavior and, and an older child. And the strongest influence in the life of your child wins. The only question is, is that you, right? That's, so that's, that's our thesis. And, you know, we live in an influencer society. Our children get hit with hundreds, if not thousands of advertisements vying for their heart, their mind, their soul, their morality. And we have to guide that narrative. And this time will be a good barometer of how that's going for you in your home. And uh, if that isn't going well and you want to change that, um, you know, there, there are very easy ways, you know, to, to work with us and do those things uh, and focus on the important things in life. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a great point. So, um, so if anyone is, you know, at home and their, you know, head is kind of spinning with all these tips, if they want to, you know, invest in your program or, you know, get more of your tips, more of your insight, where can they find you? Where can they learn more about you and your programs? Yeah, so we've got a great YouTube channel um, that we just started. Um, just search Influencer Parenting on YouTube. Um, our toddlers, influencerparenting.com. Um, our older children's, influencerparenting.com. Um, and then if you have a baby that's not sleeping through the night, um, you can go to mybabycansleep.com. And uh, we've got live chat on all those um, sites that, that go right to my phone if you have questions about joining the program. But literally for like a, the price of a Starbucks a week, we will radically transform your life just like we've done with thousands of other families and um, you know, get you into shape and, and get the family that you've always had and cure a lot of these behavior issues that aren't going away if you don't do anything about it. So you just can't bury your head in the sand and we'll show you how to build that equity, like buying a home, right? To where the momentum builds, you know, with our, our seven children, we're only at this place because we've, we've stopped and we've solved and knocked out these individual problems all along the way. And now our house with seven children probably, as humbly as I can say, it runs smoother than most homes with two children, simply because we've just <laughs> taken the time to work through all these small issues all along the way. Um, and it's, it's really easy. Yeah, well, thank you. And I, I hope a lot of people do, you know, exactly what you said and use these weeks really intentionally and not just kind of like a Disney plus free for all. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, better for this and that we all stay, you know, healthy. So yeah, and, and those days, you know, the Disney plus free for all those, those are okay. They, happen. So they, they do happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not for not for a month. You can't binge. Yeah, not for a month, you but can't, you know, you in moderation. Yeah, enjoy. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys so much for joining me. It was great to talk to you both again. Yeah. No. Thank, thank you so you. much, Michelle. We'll see you. Bye bye. All right. Enjoy. Although not much will change for you guys in the next. Yeah, yeah we, we run our own play cafe like twenty four seven. So. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right. Bye guys. Bye.